And I gotta go ghost She see I got power Now she do the most And then that gangsters Get mad make a post Bet you I win With my back is the road Rockin' off white So she think I'm the boat I jumped in the water I knew I would float You think you the best And I'm killing the goat Niggas was broke All we had was hope Bro hit the plug All he had was dope I get the last life If he think it's a joke Say she got a friend Well I want them both Ain't going to jail Like me up in the booth Talk out your mouth Then you might lose a tooth Go to your scorer All he know is shoot I'm, I'm dropping the tip I think I lost my roof Now listen to him Welcome back to the Oregon State Dynasty, ladies and gentlemen. Got another game for you guys today. Staying with Pac-12 North Divisional opponents, this time going on the road to take on Cal, a 2-5 and five team that is better than advertised, I'll tell you all right now. Uh, we'll start it off as we always do here with the sliders. And hey, while we're doing this, I've been posting a lot of YouTube shorts lately, which are just short little 15 second clips kind of like youtube's version of tiktok so be sure to go check those out i'll tag the playlist for that right here and go check out my tiktok i'd hate to cross promote on this app for another app but uh go hit me up on tiktok usernames down in the comments down below at john eads iv and uh yeah you can find that down below all my other socials are there as well so feel free to go hit me up there i'll follow back i, I promise <laughs> Anyways, those are the sliders. Let's get into the Heisman watch. John McConnell still sitting in third place going into this game. I don't think he's going to win it this year. I'm just going to be up front with y'all. He's not putting up those stats that he needs to, and it's because he's not playing the entire, you know, entirety of games and stuff. He's not the focal point of our offense. So we'll see. Uh, looking at the conference standing, still in first place, 5-0. Washington right on our heels, 6-1, 4-0. And Oregon there as well, 5-2 and 4-0. And on the south side of things, Arizona's hanging in there. Colorado's kind of there, but they're 2-5 and five overall. So that's an uphill battle. Looks like it's USC's uh, division to lose, and we'll probably see them, hopefully see them, at the end of the season if we take care of our business uh, every single year as we usually do. So we drop down to number three. If you if you watched the last recruiting episode, you've already seen this. Uh, Notre Dame and UConn slash Charlotte pass us. Looking at their resumes, th th this one's decent. Notre Dame's is fine. Two ranked wins. I mean, I'd love to know what their combined opponent record is, but it's nothing spectacular compared to ours. We have three top five wins. At the, and they're not top five teams anymore, USC, Michigan, and Tennessee. When we played them, though, they were top five teams. Uh, and Connecticut slash Charlotte doesn't have any ranked wins. So I don't really understand why we're still getting dropped from one to three in the polls, especially considering the fact that we've won, what, five consecutive national championships now? I don't know. It's a little weird to me. But all we can do is continue to handle our business. And our, on our plate today is Cal, 2-5, two 2-4 and, five, two and four in conference. Lee Corso is going with us. I don't know why you wouldn't. Way better than them at everything on paper. Uh, they have us in rush offense and pass defense. Not surprised because we are struggling in those two categories so far this year. Looking at their resume, two wins back-to-back, uh, -back actually, over Arizona State and UCLA, but five losses other than that. Uh, close loss to Washington and somewhat close to Washington State, so pretty solid team. They definitely have the talent. Here's our resume. I already kind of talked about it. Tennessee, Michigan, USC are big-time wins, and we've kind of just been cruising ever since, aside from Arizona, which is a little bit of a test. Uh, all these games are on YouTube. I'll tag the playlist. I already did tag the playlist. I'll tag one game here for you guys to go check out. It's been a fun season thus far. Cal has a decent quarterback. Looks like he doesn't take care of the ball very well. 11 picks. Really good run game. That's probably why they have a better offense on the ground than we do. 90 yards per game for this guy, Huffman. Uh, receiver, decent. 75 per game. Nothing crazy. And then not much to talk about defensively. For us, Eric Copeland's starting to emerge. 21 touchdowns, 4 picks. McConnell is... You know, getting towards that 1,000-yard mark, we'll see if he gets there. James Parker coming off a 100-yard performance. And Casey Williamson, our leader with seven sacks. All right, that's enough for me. Let's do it.
feel like it's been like three games in a row now that we've been getting the ball first. So I'm just terrible at the coin tosses, guys. I don't really know. But Cal gives Dwayne Patton a chance in the return game. He cuts it back up the middle, weaves out to the outside, and he's got a lane down the sideline. The kicker to beat, and he's gone. Dwayne Patton takes the opening kickoff back to the crib. Oh man, oh man, not again, Dwayne Patton, baby, just about locking up that returner of the year award, and our defense gets off to a massively strong start, Vince Watkins with the big time sack, getting Cal behind schedule on first down, so now second down and 18, bringing a zone blitz, they go read option, we do have it bottled up, we got Smith there, and Atkins is there, but they both miss, and the quarterback gets upfield, and picks up 20 yards on the first down, Terrible tackling. I was so upset with myself for that episode. That was just awful. Uh, and they hit us up through the air with a little out route off of that. So Cal moving the football on its opening drive of the game. Gotcha, go back with the counter, though. I don't know where this running back is going. Look at this. The middle of the field is wide open. That's where you're supposed to go on a counter. He didn't, and he gets hurt. So a lose-lose scenario there for Huffman and Cal's offense. Third down and eight. Under seven to go in the first quarter. Screen pass right side. You can't run screens against this. They're just not going to work. It doesn't work here. Uh, running back gets up inside the 40, but that would be it. We keep them out of field goal range, so Cal would punt it. And actually a very good kick by their punter inside the five. No shot for Carl Hollywood Wilson to have an opportunity. So bad starting field position. So now we're backed up at our own one yard line and Copeland forces a throw into the zone coverage and Powers picks it off. He's returning and he's down inside the five yard line. A critical error, a critical mistake and a bad turnover. That's going to give Cal a great chance to knock this game up. They start with the run. Jude's there. He misses nope. the first time but gets there the second time helping out Jared Hemphill and brings him down. So second goal, our defense is known for standing up and getting big stops in the red zone. This time a run to the outside. We just keep him out of the end zone, down at the one. So third and goal, we're sending the blitz. Can we keep him out of the end zone? They just run a simple run inside tackle. He bounces off the left tackle, and Mendoza gets in for the game-tying score. You almost wish Dwayne Patton would just return every single kickoff he's presented the opportunity to because our offense did not look good on that first drive. Let's see if we can get better here. Not a good play right there. Copeland has a wide open receiver on the slant, and he missed. He really struggled all day with the accuracy. His completion percentage was not that high. But McConnell gets the first down. Play action pass. Wide open receiver in the middle. Bruh. And he's way off the throw. 0 for 3 start for Copeland. Hasn't even completed a pass yet. So many yards left uh, left on the field. So much meat left on the bone. Now third down and 9. This is two-play territory. We check to the midline read option. Copeland keeps, runs up the middle, gets 10 and more inside the 40. Big first down into plus territory. He can't pass it, but he can certainly run it still. And he did that right there. Now he's dropping back to pass. Has Pennington open over the middle. He makes the catch. Spins out of a tackle. And he's inside the red zone. That's what we needed. Let's go, Copeland. First completed pass of the ball game. Another pass. Going to the corner. It's Haas. He wins the one-on-one. -on -one, makes the catch. And scores the touchdown. So a promising bounce back by Copeland and that offense. Let's see if our defense can kind of figure it out. They haven't really been tested yet. I mean, not much you could do when you give the offense a free possession inside the five, right? So let's see if they can shut this one game down. Michael Smith did just that right there. Make it Casey Williamson. Absolutely blows up the right guard. Gets in the backfield for a loss of eight on a run play, which is insane. Third and seven. Stevens has all day. No, Come back. No, sir. Dwayne Patton right there. He swats it. Would have loved the pick, but we'll take the swat no less. Cal would punt it. Come out to the 20 with a touchback. Second down and one. Just 13 seconds to go in the first quarter. A blitz, and Copeland can't get the throw off. 
Man, that safety took a page out of our book there with that blitz. Uh, Copeland had to get rid of it quick, and he didn't. So now third down at six, corner route not there. Again, should have checked it down, but would have loved Copeland to at least keep the ball in play and give us a chance to maybe make a play on that football, so we have to punt it back to him again. Nice tackle by Lundy, the gunner, to negate a bigger game, but great starting field position for Cal. Read gotcha, option, bitch. shut it down. Michael Smith, way to read it, baby. He gets the TFL. Loss of four on first down. Second and 14. Nope. Option, no, sir. This time, Casey Williamson containing the edge and shutting down Stevens. So now third down and 17, right where we want them to be. Seven to go in the second quarter. Jude dropping back. He sees the uh, slant route, but he doesn't even need the help. Ten yards for Nick Ross, but Jesse Bailey makes the stop uh, before the sticks. So Cal would punt it back to us again. Return for Wilson. Not much there, only nine yards, but he picks up the face mask penalty. That would move it forward 15 yards. And now we're trying to just hit the ground game because we know the pass game has been super inconsistent thus far. So let's feed our Heisman watch list member, John McConnell, and see if he can get this offense going. A couple big runs. Now let's go back to that pass. We set Bruh. it up with the run. Another slant missed by Copeland. What is he doing? Wide open pass for big for big yardage, and we're just missing him. He does hit that one. I hope he could. I mean, it's just a five-yard pass, and Haas gets 12. Now third and six at the 30-yard line. Five and a half to go in the second. Hand off McConnell. Not fast enough to get to the sticks, but he does get four, and we're going to go for this. Fourth down and two. Sweep. Read option. Copeland keeps. Has the blocks downfield. Gets the clear out block. One man to beat, and he beats him. Eric Copeland gone. A fourth down. Turns into a touchdown. Okay, defense back to work. I would love to avoid another shootout type game, which we had against Arizona. So if we could just, you know, not play around today, that'd be great. Again, more missed tackles. Literally the same thing that happened in the first quarter. Jared Hemphill's there to make the tackle. I mean, we should have made it with Jude in the first place, but he just gets pushed around off the block. And, you know, that's just the young safety continuing to, you know, uh, go through the learning uh, groove, learning pains that will happen. And he makes another mistake there, missing a tackle. And Cal responds with a big touchdown. Dan Hall, 36-yard pitch and catch, and they're within one score. It looks like we're getting into exactly what I don't want to be in, which is a shootout. Uh, but you know what? Our offense is still producing. Brewer makes the catch on the flood route, 17 yards there. About three to go in the first half. Hand off McConnell. He gets ahead up to midfield for a gain of six. I love this play. This is one of my favorite plays in the game. We haven't had the chance to run it much this year. Uh, and it didn't really work out. There was definitely somebody else that I could have hit, probably the in route. But at least we get the throw off. We pick up 10 on the little zig route. And now we're going to hammer Carl Wilson in the bubble screen game. Cal started stacking the box. We had this as a setup play. So we just ran it and ran it and ran it. We get, to, we get it out to Wilson again. He gets up ahead for eight yards. Would have loved to see a little more yard after the catch there, a little more speed, but we'll take eight all day of the week. McConnell, nifty spin. He's inside the 10, and just like that, we got a chance to extend our lead again. Bring in the two tight end set. Man-to-man -man coverage. Copeland has Jackson, and he's in there. We ran that play last game. We bring it back this week, and the true freshman catches a touchdown for the second week in a row. Man, talk about unlikely heroes. True freshman tight end Ryan Jackson making big time no, plays. Anderson with a nice swat on first down. Uh, but those two tight end sets, I'm going to try to run a lot more in the red zone because those man-to-man -man coverage things, we can win. We've already seen Haas catch a, a tight end, uh, Haas the tight end catch a pass in the red zone. Now Jackson gets one. But Cal's doing much of the same, winning those one-on-ones uh, against Give the DBs. Not this time, though. Joel Stewart blankets the receiver. Stevens forces a throw in there, and the cornerback gets his second interception of the season. Way to go, baby. That is just what the doctor ordered. Now 42 seconds left in the half and a chance to extend the lead. Jump ball for Pennington. He climbs the ladder and makes the grab. What a catch by the receiver and a great throw by Copeland, dropping it in the bucket. So we move ahead a couple plays later. We're out of timeouts at this point. 20 seconds ago, we just picked up a first down. So clock stopped momentarily. Under route for Howard. Can't get the yards after the catch. He's brought down at the five, and that clock's ticking. Tick, 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 tick. We spiked it. It sets up a chance for a field goal, and we go into the halftime break with a 31-14 to 
to 13 lead. Not bad. I didn't think we played very well in the first half, so we'll take that. Uh, yardage wise, really balanced effort. We're winning time of possession. We had that one turnover. That definitely killed us, but our defense is playing well, and things are looking good here in this contest. Let's keep it up in the second frame. Usually the second quarter is our best quarter. It wasn't really that today. That wasn't really the case. Let's see if the third can be any better. Not a great start. Got burned in the man-to-man -man coverage uh, with Brian Jude. I was expecting him to break in or break out, but no. He went vertical the whole way and hit us up for a big gain. Now Mendoza gashing us on the ground. 11-yard run. So now Cal starting to get its offense going, get that ground game going. Post route, Watkins gets beat in man-to-man -man coverage. 14 more, and the Bears are driving all the way down to our 10. Under seven to go in the third quarter. Stevens looking all day to throw. He steps up in the pocket. Nobody open. Great coverage on that play. And that was third down. That brings up fourth. We force Cal to settle for a field goal. So now a chance for Dwayne Patton in the return game. We've already seen him return one kick today. He almost breaks that one loose. He's so exciting to watch. And he gives us great starting field position. But third down and eight would be the situation. Copeland on the money with the throw. But Dixon, a young receiver, drops it. So now fourth and eight. We go aggressive. We go for it. And we get it. Copeland, just before the blitz gets in there, finds Brewer for 10 in the first down. Passing again. We hit Brewer again. Big time conversion. There's 14 more. 4.18 to go in the third, in plus territory, second and 10, handoff McConnell with a two tight end set, and he runs forward for a gain of 10. So we're sprinkling in the run every now and then, and putting together a nice drive, they get a touchdown and put it away, and that's what we get. Copeland to Dixon, he makes up for his previous mistake and gets in for a 25 yard score. I want to say that was Dixon's first career touchdown reception. I could be wrong about that, but I know he's really young, just joined the program, but uh, he got a lot of quality playing time today for whatever reason. He's usually the fourth or fifth string wide receiver, so uh, defense gets, a, gets another stop. Now offense back to work. Parker catches the pass on a little drag route for 15, and we call up our favorite play, the verticals out of the bunch set. Copeland looking, has the receiver. It's Pennington who was toe-tapping, although he didn't need to. But there's 15 yards there. Now second and 10. Copeland brought down for a sack this time. The play action just wasn't working against this Cal team. Uh, the protection was just breaking down every time. So had to make that adjustment as we went. Uh, in route for Brewer on third and 16. Gets us a bit closer. So fourth down and four. And we kicked the field goals. So now up 41-16. Uh, that was a tough decision. I had to think about it for a little while. But here comes Cal. Out route. Patton misses the tackle. And Judas has to chase him down. 46 yards in the snap of a finger. Cal's not going away easy, guys. They're still in this game. They're still within striking distance. Stevens Bruh. passing again. Wide open. Who, whose man is that? Whose man is that? That was van to man coverage. It definitely wasn't my guy because we were in two man under. Absolute coverage bust. Cal pulls back within 18 but Dwayne Patton is back to work he gets the blocks he's down the sideline one guy to beat but he steps out oh Dwayne big time return though we definitely needed that it sets us up with a great opportunity to continue to extend our lead fourth and five we're not kicking a field goal this time we go for it and we get it it's Brewer again he was so clutch when we needed him to make some catches and move the chains. He did that. Now this he time a counter. Him. See ya. Little counter. Little juke move. And he's inside the five. Now third and one. Copeland. QB power. Gets the block. Fights ahead. And is ripped down at the one. But he gets the first down. Let's give it back to him. Back with Copeland. QB blast. Has the blocks. And he's walking in. Untouched. The quarterback may have just delivered the dagger. At this point, the defensive strategy was to just play a lot of zone, make tackles, don't allow big plays, keep Bruh. these guys. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that was a pick six there. Uh, but that's what we were looking for. We're looking to just keep guys in play, run that clock, not allow 40-plus yard gains because we're missing tackles and man-to-man -man coverage. And we get the sack, coverage sack, loss of five, fourth down, and Cal would punt it back to us. Here's Wilson, catches it at the 40, avoid, evades rather the first wave, and gets up to Cal's 45, great starting field position. Let's milk this clock and get this game over with. Third and 15, flood route Brewer. Who else would we go to on third down? Who else would we go to? He makes the play again. Big time conversion, but we're faced with another third and long situation. Underneath for Hall, all I wanted was a couple of yards, and we got more than that. Fourth and six, now we get the matchup we want. Man-to-man -man coverage, out route, bam. 
Parker this time, 14 yards inside the red zone. And that would just about do it. We'd milk the rest of the clock and win the game 51-23. Eric Copeland, your player of the game for, what is this, like a fourth game in a row now? Uh, struggled in the passing category, but really picked it up in the second quarter and was consistent on the ground. Uh, not so big in the second quarter today, 17-6, but 10-0 in the fourth lifted us to the win. And overall, just, you know, not a great game, but a good game. Some things to learn from, and we'll continue to move forward. Like I said before, not great for Copeland in the passing game. 64% completion percentage, which is good, but he's usually hovering around 70, 75. On the ground, again, McConnell, not much today. 18 for 95, 5 carries. Copeland had 40 yards and 2 scores. I need McConnell to bring his speed back a little bit. That's why we're hesitant to give him the football. He's not running that fast like he used to. Uh, Brewer, 8 catches, 99 yards. So clutch today. No touchdowns for him, but a lot of big catches. Haas and Jackson, the two receiving touchdowns for us. Both tight ends getting involved in the red zone. Dixon had one as well. That's right. Uh, he had just the one catch for 25. Defensively, Brian Jude, our leader with nine tackles. Vince Watkins right there with seven. Joel Stewart with four. And a couple of sacks to go around today as well, but a lot of TFLs as well. A pair for Bates, Jude, and Williamson. And then just two sacks. Actually, not that much, not that many sacks today. Uh, Bates and Watkins. But Cal was getting rid of the ball fast, so I'm not really surprised. Lone pick for Joel Stewart. Definitely needed it. Patton and Atkins with two deflections, with bo which both should have been picks. I hope we can start catching these because we're definitely going to need them, uh, especially when we get into these tougher games. Uh, punting and kicking was excellent today. We actually needed them to do stuff. Uh, Patton had the kick return touchdown. Average 51, about 52 every time he touched it. Of course, he just does what he... Uh, that's what he does. Every single time he touches the field. Uh, 447 yards of total offense today. Uh, 139 on the ground. 308 through the air. Uh, for Cal, a whole lot of passing yards, but no rushing game whatsoever. They were also 30% on third down. Only made it to the red zone twice, but still found a way to score 23 points. So good game, got the win. Now let's finish up with some recruiting here. We got two guys left on our board. Be sure to go check out previous recruiting episodes. I'll tag one right here. Uh, we got Justin Yancey, Phil Ham, two guys left on the board. We have two scholarships left. So hopefully they, goes to, they go to these two guys. We're looking really good in both of these recruitments. So let's go ahead and advance the week and see what happens. Hey, look at that. We lock up Justin Yancey, outside linebacker. Our 17th commitment in this class, three-star, 6'3", 228 out of Corona, California. Number 97 outside linebacker in the class. I think he's a little bit better than that. Uh, but another Pipeline State guy, 86 speed, 80 excel, 68, uh, 75 strength. That's what matters. 71 tackle, 62 hit power. Pretty good coverage, 62, 65 man and zone. Could certainly work on that hit power and the coverage, but, you know, you can't teach the speed. That's what he has. You guys know by now I like to recruit linebackers that have that speed. You know, Aaron Smith and the other guys I've already brought in in this class. So now one guy left, one spot left, and Phil Ham, the lone recruit unsigned right now. Still the top uh, recruiting class in the nation. Here's the composition. Yancey is the 11th best player in the class, and he's one of, I think, three linebackers now that we have, uh, including the two middle linebackers, um, Reggie Brown and Aaron Smith, the other two. Let's look at his 40 time and all that kind of good stuff. He's a 1,403rd ranked nationally so pretty low but i think he's better than advertised 4 5 40 that's why right there 4 5 40 500 bench press 545 on the squat those are really good numbers for a linebacker uh definitely some things uh, to work with there certainly could be a piece in the future for this defense for comparison you see chambers's numbers up there so pretty comparable pretty similar now eric copeland's into the highs and watch you know i had a feeling that he would get in there eventually i think i said this last week i'm surprised he not, he's not in the top five uh mcconnell unfortunately drops out not surprised by that copeland uh pac 12 player of the week again he's just on a tear he's starting to really play at a high level and you know it couldn't be coming at a better time because we got some tough games coming up uh, and since we're through with game number eight or nine, whatever, I think it was nine, uh, we are on to award semifinalists. You saw McConnell and Copeland there. There they are once again for the Walter Camp. I think we, I want to make sure we don't miss anybody down below. Yeah, no, we didn't. All right, cool. Ben Eric, we're all over this list as we typically are. Jude, Watkins, Patton, and Atkins in the top five. So we're going to be battling each other for that award. Uh, Nagurski, you got Williamson, Bates, and Jude. You know, there really isn't an alpha dog in this defensive line this year, and I like it. Some guys have seven sacks, six sacks, five sacks, eight sacks, 
four or five different guys all contributing, and that's why our defensive line is just so critical and so dangerous. Uh, Doak Walker, McConnell in fifth, pretty good for him, honestly. He's not having a great year, but uh, some work to do for sure. He could definitely shoot up that list if he continues to put in that work. Uh, Walker, or Parker rather, in the Blitnikoff, ninth in the voting right now. I think he's been on this list before, but he could continue to grow and uh, boost up there, become a finalist. Amir Moore in second for the Outland. Haven't really had a offensive lineman win too many awards, I don't think. And he's in first for the Remington, so look at that. Amir Moore, senior center, getting involved. See if they can bring some hardware home for us. Lombardi, we're usually all over this list. Michael Smith down at sixth. And we had a couple of guys up in the top three. They get top two. Bates and Williamson, no surprise there. You see right there, I mean, Bates got eight sacks. Williamson has seven. Uh, previously, we've had guys like... Jonathan Joseph, who's got 15 sacks himself, or Phil Hall, who has 15 sacks himself, and there's nobody else there, right? So uh, I think that's why our defense, especially our run defense, is so good because we're just stacked there. Uh, Thorpe, Jude, Patton, and Stewart on this list. So three defense. Make a four. Ben Moss in there as well. So almost our entire secondary. Uh, you wouldn't think it like that because our, our secondary has really struggled. But And both of our true freshman specialists are on there, kicker and punter. And, of course, Dwayne Patton's up there for the Jet. Carl Wilson right behind him. That could be interesting, guys. I mean, if Wilson houses a couple more punt returns, he could take that top spot, man. That's, that's awesome, though. Uh, it's pretty, I've never had the top two like that. Conference standings, here's a look at them. We're 9-0, 6-0 in conference. Washington's still right there, 7-1, 5-0. Oregon must have lost this week because they're now 5-3 and 4-1, and and but still in, in great position in Washington State, 5-4, and 4-2. Four, four and two. Uh, Coaches poll, we moved up to number two this week. Uh, I think uh, Charlotte, whatever, U UConn, whatever their name is, they dropped. Uh, they're not even in the top ten anymore. So, um, I mean, that's just a slap in the face for the committee. They should have kept us up there because we know we're a better team. We just smacked them last year in the national championship, right? Oh, baby, look at that. Another commitment, folks. Phil Ham, four-star wide receivers on the board. And just like that, our recruiting is done. It is week 12. We have three games to go, plus the college football playoff, hopefully, and the conference championship and all that. And our recruiting class is full. This is insane. 18 guys, 18 commits, and this dude's a beast. 90 speed, 89 excel, 75 jumping, 72 catching, 82 route running, 67 catching traffic. He's an absolute stud. I don't know why he didn't get offers from any other college because uh, yeah, he's going to be a good one. Uh, here's a look at his 40 time, 442, 220, 240, bench press squat. Don't really care what receivers are putting up in the weight room, but 442 speed, yeah, I can work with that. Plus, he's the top 175, top 200 player in the nation. So, recruiting's done. We got two more commits. We won the football game, and we're moving on. Big time matchup on the horizon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcoming Washington to Research Stadium for a top 10 matchup and a chance to make a statement against one of our rivals. I'm so excited for that. Hope you are as well. Smash the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We will see you guys with that game very soon.